Alright guys, Extreme Reunion time. Um, man, this show was just grotesque. Uh, oh man, so much stuff went wrong here. It was hilarious. I actually found this to be um, pretty funny, just entertaining because of how bad it was. Uh, <laughs> oh my god, this show. So, to start off with, um, for those of you who have not heard anything about this and just how bad it was, it's it was April, let's see, 28th, and to start things off with, Sabu was found unresponsive in his hotel room. Uh, I've heard all types of stuff. I heard it was a drug overdose, and I heard it was an allergy to medication or something. I don't know. But they put, rushed him to the emergency room, and he couldn't be in the main event. I'm not laughing at Sabu being messed up. I'm just laughing at how everything that could go wrong did on this show. So they also had a match scheduled. I think it was the Jerry Lynn versus uh, Devin Storm match. It was supposed to be Lynn versus Credible. Credible's all messed up backstage and no shape to perform. So he's high as balls, and I don't know what the hell was going on back there. I guess just the toxic environment of these guys getting together again just brings out like the worst in them. And there's pictures online, like people tweeted of Sabu passed out in a chair, Incredible passed out in a chair, and it's kind of sad stuff. And then after the show, Axel Rotten. Sorry, it's, I'm very tired. I'm trying not to yawn after watching this. But then Axel Rotten gets in a car wreck after the show. I mean, just it's like it was cursed or something. And then there was all types of problems. People paid for these special ringside seats to get special ECW or Extreme Reunion chairs. And they didn't have the chairs. And just a bunch of shit like that happened. And I don't know. It was just a colossal disappointment for everybody who went. And I think they were charging like 20, 25 bucks for this pay per view. I don't know what the hell they were thinking. This was garbage. <laughs> this was so bad. But, I mean, just the show I have, the internet pay per view they did, <clears throat> it's not even the entire show. I don't have the Raven versus Gary Wolf match. Apparently, I went to the Extreme Reunion website and it lists all the matches except for that one. That one's not included here. I don't know if they had technical difficulties during that match. Apparently, Raven came out. He was supposed to wrestle Gary Wolf. He didn't do crap in the match. Um, <clears throat> he had some guy with him, a new member of the flock, who was like a legit crippled person who worked most of the match. And then Sandman came in and caned everybody, and none of that is on this show. So I'm assuming that either they had technical difficulties or it was just so bad they didn't put it on there. Uh, either way, I don't really care because it just means I don't have to watch it. <coughs> Excuse me. So either way, I'm fine with that. But... If you have seen the new shoot interview coming out with Sandman, I think May 29th, um, wow, he is in dire straits. I mean, this guy looks really bad. So, yeah, <clears throat> I'm kind of glad I didn't have to see that. But the show was so bad that Shane Douglas actually issued an apology to the fans um, on the Extreme Reunion YouTube where he apologizes because of the no-shows and just, I guess, how shitty it was. And they plan to run more. I think they said the next one's in June. And they tried to set up some angles here, and it's just, oh my God, no buys. Who would, in their right mind, ever pay money for this? It's just time to pack it up and go home, guys. I mean, it's just, they drew a big house, so I think the interest was there, but 
I don't think they got enough to continue this. Like I said, Sabu was out. Credible was out. Um, Jerry Lynn said he was retiring here, so he's not going to be able to save these things anymore. And just a bunch of stuff went wrong. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and get into this uh, train wreck. So it starts off, this poor guy comes out. Um, I feel really bad for him. Uh, I think they said his name was RTC. He apparently was an old announcer for ECW. I don't really remember him. Of course, I don't remember announcers for most companies, but uh, apparently he was a legit ECW guy. He comes out, and the crowd shits all over this guy. First thing they do is chant Styles at him. Um, they want Joey Styles instead, obviously. They chant Shut the Fuck Up. This poor guy, he's got hats to give away. He's try He instantly realizes that they're not going to listen to him. So he says, Who wants a hat? So he's tossing hats to the audience. People are chanting, Throw it back. Oh, man, it was just awkward and uncomfortable. So they bring out Robbie uh, Marino for commentary, and the fans chant, You suck dick. And it, as it's panning over the audience and the people chanting, You suck dick, there's like an eight-year-old kid chanting it. And I'm like, oh my god, dude. What else is going to happen? So then Joel Gertner comes out. He actually gets a pretty good reaction. So he joins the commentary team. Then we get the first match, the BWO versus the FBI. Uh, not that bad. Uh, they have The BWO has Inchworm, Thomas Rodman. They do some comedy spots. They do a spot with Guido and Blue Meanie thumb wrestling. And it was actually okay. The referee's counting the thumbs. And then Mama Luke runs in to try and break it up and leg drops Guido's hand. And it just... I thought it was okay. I mean, it's a BWO match. There's going to be comedy. Uh, Luke Hawks, who you may know as Alter Boy Luke from XPW, comes out, distracts Big Stevie Cool. Mama Luke gets a, a roll up for the win. And that was it. Like I said, they're trying to set up a few things for future shows. Why? Who knows? Uh, then we get the Wrestling Purist Dream Match. C.W. Anderson versus Al Snow. This crap was so freaking boring. Oh my god, this was boring. Um, the entire time, Al Snow comes out, he does his bit with head, but he puts it down, and he keeps going back to it, picking it up, acting like he's going to use it, the ref has to stop him. He does it like five times, and it's really slow every single time. He like stops, pauses, waits for the audience reaction. The fans chanted boring. Um, just really really not good. Uh, the ref actually takes a bump here. Al Snow hits the snowplow, but the ref's slow to count, so this actually goes on longer. Um, the ref takes head from Snow. CW wins with a spine buster. Afterwards, Snow cuts a promo with head. He pile drives head, beats it up. This was actually funny. And then he comes back and apologizes and leaves. This show is so insane. Lights go out, and there's a stripper in the ring. She's stri she's not stripping. Um, she's just dancing around. She's actually trying to... She looks bad. Uh, she looks like she's kind of messed up. And she's walking in these high heels, and she, like, slips on her foot. It was so just bad. Like, you get a dirty feeling watching this show, I think. Um, I did, anyway. It's like, oh, God. And then they cut to the crowd, and there's another stripper in the audience, and she actually shows uh, her breast to everyone. Um, <laughs> I don't know, man. This is probably... I don't know if I could say it was the worst show ever. I don't even know. But anyways, chairs, chairs, and more chairs is the next match. Balls Mahoney versus Axel Rotten. Axel Rotten is still rocking the Marilyn Manson shirts. Um, Balls tries to cut a promo with him without a microphone, but the fans won't shut up. So you can't really hear much of it, but he was trying to say that these fans, we're really hardcore guys and extreme guys, and these fans paid their hard-earned money. They don't want to see arm bars and shit. They want us to kill each other. So I think that's what he said. But anyways... 
Balls goes outside. He gets a garbage bag of weapons. They, get, they use like a toothpick bat, thumbtacks, uh, a cheese grater, obvious blade jobs. They didn't even try to hide this. Uh, they just straight out bladed. And <laughs> Axel destroys Balls with a couple chair shots to the head and then DDTs him on the chair for the win. Um, at least this was entertaining. I thought it was entertaining. Not not the best hardcore match, not the best match, not the best anything, but it was entertaining on a show that was already going down the shitter and really bad. So when it got to this, I found this at least better than everything else that had already happened. Um, then we get Angel of Debaldi's. He comes out. And he tries to cut a promo. Fans chant shut the fuck up at him. Um, they just don't care at all. New Jack and Mustafa come out. They beat him up with stuff. New Jack uses a Wolverine claw on him. Uh, New Jack puts him on a table. He's going to jump off a ladder. He actually climbs to the top and he says, no, I need to go higher. So he gets a ladder. And it's not that much higher. And a fan actually chants that to him. But he jumps off the ladder or actually he doesn't jump off the ladder. He climbs the ladder and then Ruckus and Black G's come out and beat up the gangsters. New Jack falls through the table and that's it. Uh, after he falls through the table, Ruckus picks him up, punches him in the head a couple times. Um, Black G's tries to choke out Mustafa and then they leave and that was it. So, oh, after this, a guy comes out to clean up all the mess, like the ladder and the table, and there's like a red headband in the mat, and he picks it up and he tosses it to the crowd, and then the fans just toss it right back. No one cared. And they actually start chaining refund at this point. Then we get Devin Storm, or as you may know him, Crowbar from WCW uh, versus Jerry Lynn. Um, fans chant save the show at these guys. And this was the best match of the night. Uh, probably, you know, it was average. It was okay. Nothing really impressive. But for this show, oh my god, it was like a five-star classic for this show. Um, they do a spot with Homicide, <clears throat> who's at ringside. I guess another way to set up a future angle. Um, Crowbar takes a bump onto his setup guardrail between the apron and the other guardrail. Uh, then Lynn takes a suplex onto the guardrail. Lynn hits a Frankensteiner off the top rope through a table on the outside. Fans chant, thank you, Jerry. They chant, thank you, Crowbar. Lynn suplexes Crowbar onto two standing chairs and Powell drives him on a chair for the win. Afterwards, he <clears throat> says he's retiring and he thanks the fans. Then Shane Douglas comes out. He talks about Sabu being unresponsive and not being there but their family and family sticks by each other so the replacement is Shane Douglas versus Two Cold Scorpio with Bill Alfonso <clears throat> Fonzie's wearing this jacket it says TNA manager on the back he got it from the hardcore homecoming uh, show they did in 2010 I believe and it says like RVD on the side Sabu on the side and he takes it off and he's wearing a TNA shirt and fans just chant fuck TNA. I don't know why he thought this was a good idea. Um, but it's Fonzie, you know. You can't really hate on him. And Douglas wears his t-shirt the entire time. Um, that's just something I hate. I hate when wrestlers do that. Like Sting for a little while. He would wear a shirt for his matches. It just doesn't look very professional. And it makes it look really Bush League. So I just really hate that. That's just something I really didn't like. Um, so the guys brawl in the crowd, and they climb up these stairs or the bleachers, and Douglas and Scorpio get each other in this leg submission. And someone actually yells out, because they're going back and forth with their legs and kicks, and they're kind of holding each other, and someone yells, I love interracial 69ing. And I just laughed my ass off of that. That was great. Um, and then Douglas puts like a boot on Scorpio's throat. And he just yells, you fucker. You fucker, get off me. 
And I think Scorpio was wearing a thong this entire time that was like riding up his ass. Uh, I couldn't really tell, but I'm pretty sure that's what it was. Kind of disturbing. So, anyway, fans chant, just retire. Then a masked man comes out and low blows Douglas. It's Kevin Sullivan. Then uh, Scorpio hits a moonsault on Douglas, who kicks out. Then Scorpio hits a flip and into a leg drop off the top, and Douglas kicks out. And then he hits a springboard moonsault, and Douglas gets his foot under the rope. Um, just ridiculous here. So another masked man comes out, and it's Todd Gordon. Douglas rolls up Scorpio while he's distracted, and thankfully it ends. That was it. Everybody was happy. It was finally over. Whenever Douglas would kick out, people would chant, Fuck you, Shane, and boo. I mean, it was just a really, really depressing show. Um, oh, man. When I heard about this, I thought probably going to be bad Raven, you know, for some reason insist on dyeing his hair blonde that makes him look like he's 100 years old I don't know why he does that but it looks horrible and I was just picturing that in my mind, Raven out there with the blonde hair uh, you know, the Sandman and the shape he's in, even Sabu I pictured it being bad, I didn't picture it being anywhere near this bad and as soon as I was reading results for this and just everything that had happened, I was just uh, just really depressed because, like a lot of wrestling fans, I was really into ECW. I was a huge ECW fan. I got, I did a wrestling DVD collection video of all my wrestling VHS and DVDs, and I got tons of old ECW VHS tapes, and I just really loved the product, and to see this with Shane Douglas out there and the fans, the loyal uh, fans in Philadelphia who packed the house and paid good money. I think these tickets, they weren't cheap. And went to the show, actually ended up booing everything except Jerry Lynn and Devin Storm. So that really shows you just how much um, this show failed. So, yeah, I can't really think of anything else to say about this show. I know I'm burying it, but after watching this, um, oh, man, I just, I was so glad it was over. Just, I highly recommend you never, ever watch this. If you can get this show for free, don't watch it. Don't watch it, period. There is no reason anyone needs to watch this. It's just, if you're a fan of ECW, don't watch this because it's just going to shit on all the memories. So, I can't recommend this to anyone. So that's my review of Extreme Reunion. And I hope you guys liked the video. Leave your thoughts on it in the comments below. And I will be back um, with CZW Proving Grounds. So, that's it guys. Thanks for watching.